Hello and welcome back everyone we we online and today i'm going to continue the story what if m grama was naruto's mother part 2 if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload no wasting no more time let's begin the morning sun shone high in the sky shining a bright light down onto naruto's usual clearing Once more he was curled up with midnight clinging to his body. He was the first to wake, fluttering his eyes open and smiling at the sight of her sleeping body. Naruto leaned down to place a gentle kiss against her forehead before slipping away from her grasp. He immediately went to the middle of his clearing to start his morning practice routine. This involved him stretching first before forming one hand into hand signs and producing four clones around himself which erupted out of a plume of smoke. The clones then lunged towards Naruto in a deadly assault. Off to the side Midnight stirred, yawning a bit before turning her attention to Naruto and his clones. She stared in awe at the sight. He was so fast, barely a blur to her eyes. He does this every morning before school. A sultry voice spoke out from the side. Kyuubai moved out of the brush of the forest towards Midnight, a hand full of grapes held in her grasp. The woman then laid lazily down next to where Midnight was laid. Midnight looked to Kyuubai in disbelief. Every morning, for how long? Midnight questioned while focusing on Naruto's fighting. He was intensively focused, weaving and dancing gracefully around the field. His fighting style was hypnotic to watch. The way his body flowed, dodged and deflected the assault from those clones. Kyuubai shrugged casually when hearing Midnight's question. Since this is just a warm-up just about a half an hour, then he showers the heads off to school. The demoness explained further before plopping a grape into her mouth. Midnight canted her head to the side curiously. I wonder what human schools are like. Midnight asked more to herself than anyone. As soon as she spoke those words a shadow appeared above her body. She looked up to see Naruto standing above her with a soft smile on his face. The morning sun caused the boy to glow from Midnight's perspective. When did he come over here? He was so fast. Come see for yourself. A time later, so we spend hours being taught by Aruka. He's pretty cool and has always been nice to me. One of the few. I don't learn much there but I go because mother said it would reduce suspicion. No one knows that I've become half demon or about my relationship with mother. Naruto explained as he and Midnight sailed quickly from tree branch to tree branch towards the village. Midnight listened attentively. I can't believe you've managed to keep that a secret for so long. Doesn't anyone check up on you? From what I've heard, the villagers consider you the demon child. They think you're dangerous, so shouldn't they be keeping a close watch? Midnight questioned, moving a little bit behind him so she could stare fully at the way his body moved. Naruto released a small chuckle from her comment. Well, a few people visit me sometimes, but most of the time I just use demon clone jutsu to fool them. The only one who could see past it is the Hokage, and he is usually too busy to visit me much. The few times he does my mother warns me and I make sure I'm able to talk to him in person. If he's suspicious he hasn't shown any signs, but I can't be too sure. He's very powerful, Naruto explained, a hint of admiration in his voice. Midnight did not ignore Naruto's tone. Is he nice to you? She questioned with her brow raised. Naruto looked back at her and nodded solemnly. Yes, as nice as anyone can be to a demon child. Midnight huffed at that answer. If he was so nice then he should explain to the villagers that you're a hero, not the monster they think you are. Midnight barked. Naruto just sighed and nodded. It's not that simple. The villagers know Kyuubai is trapped in me but they have to direct their hate somewhere. Most just can't see past their own emotions, no matter what he does. Sarutobai, the Hokage, he's done everything in his power to protect me. When I left the orphanage, he convinced the council to give me my own apartment. I'm sure in a way he stopped the villagers from doing even worse to me. The humans dot 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 they aren't all bad. Naruto explained with a far-off gaze, still with a somber tone. Midnight wasn't having any of it. Her teeth bared. People like him just prove how messed up your society is. Even someone as strong and good as him can't stop those other assholes from hurting you. I felt what you've been through, Naruto. It's clear to me that even the best of your kind can't stop the worst of your kind from being horrible. They can just, at best, make the horrible shit less horrible. But it's all still horrible. Naruto froze up as Midnight spoke those words, standing on a branch overlooking Kanoha. They had just arrived at the village. You keep saying my kind, but I'm only half human Midnight. I can't help that. I wish I could but I can't. And they can't either. They can't help their natures. Naruto explained while wrapping his arms around his body, taking a vulnerable posture. Midnight gasped when seeing Naruto's reaction, leaping over to him and laying her head against his chest. I'm sorry Naruto, I didn't mean 
But before she could finish her sentence Naruto had placed a finger against her lips, his posture shifting again to a confident one within an instant. Don't be sorry, you are right. Some of them are good, but a lot of them are bad. Hell a lot of the good ones do bad things. I'm not making excuses for them, I just wanted you to understand. Naruto explained. Midnight just listened quietly, which caused Naruto to chuckle and shake his head softly. He brought a hand up to slick his hair back. He was in his fully human form since he was so close to Kanoha. I plan to change all of this. It's just that. I'm not sure how best to do it. Because I know that no matter what road I'll take, it's going to be covered in blood. Naruto stated with a heavy sigh, casting his eyes downward and away from midnight. The girl's ears perked from that. Are you dot 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 you plan to take the life of some of these humans? But I thought you cared for them. Because you're part human. Midnight questioned with a confused look. Naruto sighed again before straightening his posture and narrowing his eyes at the village. I'll change them even if it kills them. The boy stated in a haunting voice. This admission caused a wicked smile to play across Midnight's face. Naruto was full of surprises. Naruto looked down at Midnight's smile and chuckled. Geez you don't have to be so excited. We have a while until I'm ready you know. Naruto stated playfully while moving his arms forward and scooping up Midnight's body bridal style. Now as for you, I know you can perform henge. Do you know how to blend in with the humans? They'd freak out if they saw you obviously. Naruto questioned while raising his brow at midnight. The girl just nodded. Well I think I have an idea. Midnight said before morphing her body into a small baby fox with one overly large black tail. She then jumped onto Naruto's shoulder, nuzzled into his neck, and wrapped that tail around his neck so it appeared as if Naruto was wearing a black scarf. He had his normal orange jumpsuit on with the addition of that black scarf. Kayu chan gave me the idea when she was teaching me about humans and their clothes. Midnight explained, and we can even talk through our link while I'm touching you. And when we grow closer I won't even have to be touching you. Midnight explained further. Naruto nodded his head with a small smile across his face. Well aren't you clever? Naruto cooed. Thank you Naruto-kun. You're welcome Midnight. Naruto answered quickly before heading towards the academy. Midnight now you will see why the whole village thinks Naruto is an idiot. Huyubai said with a devilish snicker. Naruto frowned before taking off towards the village. It didn't take long for Naruto to reach the academy. And once he did, he got into character. He arrived right when the bell rang. His screams could be heard from the class. No, I was so close this time. I have to stop stopping for ramen. Naruto screamed. Silent laughter came from some students in the classroom. Seconds later Naruto burst into the classroom huffing and puffing. Naruto you're late again. I'm going to have to dock some points from your next test as punishment. A man wearing a chunin vest and slash across his nose said while scribbling something into his clipboard. But Aruka sensei I was only late by a couple seconds. Naruto wind. Then maybe you should worry less about ramen and more about getting to class on time. The man lectured. A chorus of snickers could be heard throughout the room. Naruto pouted more before putting his hands behind his head and walking to the back of the class where his seat has. That's Aruka. I thought you said he was nice to you. Midnight questioned while glaring towards the man. In her baby fox form she could see everything through the fur of her tail. He is. He just doesn't want it to seem like I'm getting special treatment. Naruto explained while taking his seat next to a wide-eyed, lavender pupiled girl. Gee good morning. Naruto. The girl stated in a barely audible, high-pitched voice. Naruto smiled warmly done to her as he took his seat. What's up Hinata? Naruto blurted out in his dobi way. For the rest of the day, Midnight watched everyone intently. She wanted to learn everything about Naruto's life and that included who he was around on a daily basis. She picked a couple of people she paid attention to more than others. Those people were the lavender-eyed girl who obviously had a crush on Naruto. The loud pink-headed girl who Naruto pretended to have a crush on. The pineapple-headed boy who says everything is too troublesome. The very quiet boy who she hears something crawling inside of. There was also that moody boy who all the girls seemed to like. Midnight however had no interest. Her attention was mainly focused on the girl sitting next to Naruto who was periodically stealing glances his way. So who is this girl Naruto? She's adorably timid. Midnight murmured in amusement while watching the girl steal yet another glance to the side of Naruto's face. Without looking towards Hinata, Naruto let a small smile grow across his face. Another person who is really nice to me. And, I think she likes me. Naruto spoke to Midnight through their telepathic link. Upon hearing that Midnight's eyes instantly narrowed towards the girl. Competition. Midnight thought to herself before seeing another one of the girl's timid glances. Midnight quirked a brow in interest, going silent and continuing to watch the girl closely. She does seem nice. I wonder what would happen if she found out about you and Kayu-chan.
You think she'd still be nice? Midnight questioned while staring unblinkingly at the girl. Naruto didn't answer immediately, now slowly moving his gaze towards Hinata to look at her from the corner of his eyes. Hinata caught the glance from the corner of her eye, causing the girl to immediately look away as her face burned bright red. I don't know, Naruto whispered. Midnight stayed silent, thinking about his answer. How intriguing. Maybe you should find out. Midnight proposed which drew an audible gasp from Naruto. What was she suggesting? But Naruto's gasp drew the attention of some of the class, most notably Aruka. Was there something you wanted to share with the class Naruto? Aruka questioned while looking up to where Naruto sat. Naruto was thrown off guard, his dope mask dropping for an instant. Nothing in particular Aruka, forgive me. Naruto stated while his eyes trailed off to the side, lost in his thoughts. Pretty much the entire class now noted Naruto's sudden change in demeanor. H.A.'s posture was more calm, his voice was different, not the annoying whiny voice he usually had. His voice was soothing, sensual, and Naruto never apologized to Uruka. Uruka raised a brow at the sudden change. Hinata managed to look at Naruto, her head tilting in confusion. Um, Naruto, are you okay? Uruka responded back. The question caused Naruto's attention to snap back to reality. His eyes suddenly widened when realizing that his mask had dropped. Instantly Naruto raised his arms behind his head and smiled brightly. What? I'm fine. Ain't gotta worry about me. Naruto said with a small chuckle, rubbing his nose a bit. From below him Naruto's behavior caught the attention of a few people, most notably Sasuke. The broody preteen, staring up at Naruto. The hell was that? The boy thought to himself before returning his attention to the front of the class as Aruka responded back. Well since you've got everyone's attention mind showing us how to perform a henge jutsu. That is the current topic Naruto. Try to mimic the Hokage. Aruka explained while motioning for Naruto to step to the front of the class. Naruto got up without hesitation, his hands behind his head, fully returning to his dope persona. Yay yeah, yay, yeah, I got this this time. Naruto said before forming his hands into a seal and shouting henge. The version of Naruto's Hakage was way too short. It appeared as if the Hakage's skin was melting. Naruto then poofed back to his normal self. That was followed by a series of laughter from the class. Naruto then pouted and pointed towards the class. Just you wait. I won't have to pretend to be the Hakage because one day I'm going to be the Hakage for real. Believe it. If possible the class burst out into even more laughter and Naruto stormed back to his seat, flopping down and crossing his arms with a pout. Wow no wonder they think you're an idiot. You're a great actor Naruto-kun. Midnight stated in admiration. Thank you. Naruto replied back with an inward smile. That show had made most everyone forget about the small break to Naruto's mask earlier. Except a select few. Most notably there were a three people that took time whenever they could to watch Naruto. Hinata, Sasuke, and Uruka, something Naruto noticed as well. At the end of the class midnight didn't doubt that anyone thought Naruto was smart. He constantly made a fool of himself and pulled pranks. At times she even began to believe that Naruto was an idiot, until she thought back on the date they had yesterday. She would never think Naruto was anything but a genius and incredibly sexy. She was reminded of how different he was from his idiot alter ego when they were back in their clearing, and Naruto transformed back into his demonic form. So what did you think of my school? Naruto asked while fluffing up his long golden hair and relaxing now that he didn't have to put on that mask. Midnight moved in front of Naruto and shoved him down to the ground, jumping on top of him and straddling his waist. She wiggled her hips playfully and delved his clawed hands deep into Naruto's hair to begin massaging his scalp. It's not that much different from schools in the demon realm. Well basic concept at least, minus the teasing and bullying. Well, I guess it's a lot different, Midnight explained while trailing her fingers through Naruto's hair. You'll have to tell me all about it sometime. Naruto explained while closing his eyes and enjoying the massage Midnight was now giving to his scalp. When hearing Naruto's reply a small smirk grew across Midnight's face. Maybe, Midnight teased, which drew a cute little pout from Naruto's lips. How cruel, Naruto stated in a huff while crossing his arms. Midnight leaned her body down atop Naruto's and delivered a little Eskimo kiss to his nose. I am a demon after all, the girl joked. Naruto let out a sultry chuckle at the comment. Now you sound like mother, Naruto said with an exaggerated sigh. Midnight giggled lightly and entwined her legs with Naruto. I'll take that as a compliment. As Naruto and Midnight bantered playfully back and forth Kyubai held a serious expression from inside Naruto's mind. She watched the scene with her eyes narrowed. Aruka noticed something, and he wasn't the only one. This may complicate things, Kyubai thought to herself. 
but Naruto picked up on those thoughts. Even while he engaged with Midnight he replied to Kyuubai's thoughts. We'll be ready. For the next couple of weeks Naruto and Midnight began to grow closer. They started training together, spending every waking moment in each other's presence. They learned each other's likes, dislikes, hobbies, hopes, dreams. Kyuubai trained them as a unit, as two parts of one whole. She trained them to complement each other in every way, and their demonic link only served to strengthen their bond. As they grew closer more cracks became visible in Naruto's mask while he attended school. Naruto had an entire year still to be in the academy, and already at the beginning of the year the change in his behavior was starting to show, and a few people could see it. Outside the Shinobi Academy the children of Naruto's class were doing outdoor training. This generally consisted of projective throwing practice, tree hopping, and a bit of sparring. The very basics. Aruka and Mizuki oversaw the training, though Mizuki was a lot less attentive than Aruka. Mizuki was overseeing a particular fight and drew a hint of concern from Aruka when Aruka noticed Mizuki allowing the fight to go on longer than it probably should have. Okay that's enough. Aruka called over to Mizuki, causing the two children to stop their fighting. They were Ino and Sakura, their hands deep in each other's hair. The girls engaging in a fierce cat fight over which one Sasuke liked more. Sasuke could care less. He was off to the side practicing his kunai throwing. Like always he hit his target dead center, throwing the pieces of metal at a tree with a target painted against it. He had his usual crowd of fangirls around him and couldn't help smirking smugly. The boy looked around and noticed something absent, Naruto. Typically Naruto would be right next to Sasuke trying to prove himself to be better. But of course Sasuke was always vastly better at each subject. But when looking around Sasuke spotted Naruto across the clearing, just sitting down with his back against tree alone, a subtle smile across the golden-haired boy's face. Sasuke shot the boy a small glare. Something was definitely different. Wait, so how many fought in the tournament? Naruto spoke through his mind link to Midnight. A like usual Midnight was in her baby fox form, her tail wrapped around Naruto's neck to make her look like a scarf. He still had on his baggy orange jumpsuit. At least 200. It was kind of like a big battle royal. Would you be surprised that there were even some boys fighting there too? I beat them all, Midnight stated in a smut tone. Naruto released a small, sultry chuckle from her words. Boys, I wonder what it would be like to have a boy demon as a friend. Are they that much different than girls? Naruto stated in curiosity. Being referred to just as Naruto's friend was a bit upsetting to Midnight but she got over it pretty quickly. She'd work on that. They are different in subtle ways, but not by much. It really depends on the person really. Boys are genuinely more competitive but not as competitive as me clearly. Midnight stated in a proud tone. Naruto let out a sultry bit of laughter. Clearly, he replied, a contented smile across his face. Naruto's eyes held a far-off look as he continued his conversation with Midnight inside his head. A little ways away Hinata was practicing her fighting stances alone, but she did so in such a way as to be able to constantly watch Naruto. She was another person who was noticing Naruto's changes recently. He was less loud, less passionate about being Hakage, and just seemed more happy, like actually happy. Hinata was one of the few people that saw through Naruto's mask. While she practiced a kick the girl was suddenly knocked off balance by someone bumping into her. Sasuke was making his way over to Naruto with a narrowed gaze, completely oblivious to Hinata's presence. She rarely even made her presence known in the first place. His shoulder collided roughly with her back and caused her to start to fall to the side at a weird angle. Hinata let out, out a small, barely audible shriek as she prepared to roll with her fall. She was unable to do so because an arm wrapped around her belly, stopping her fall. The lavender-eyed girl held a surprised expression in her eyes as she turned her head to notice Sasuke. He lunged forward to catch her. Sorry, Sasuke stated in a blunt manner, his face emotionless before letting her go. Hinata regained her posture and bowed her head to Sasuke. Hi, it's okay, she said politely. Sasuke tucked his hand in his shorts and nodded before walking off towards Naruto again. Behind her Hinata could feel icy glares against the back of her head. She turned her head to the side to notice a sea of angry faces staring at her. Sasuke's fan club. Hinata went wide-eyed before bowing her head and slowly stepping away from the angry girls. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sasuke continued on his way making very little of that short encounter. His eyes focused on the blonde-haired boy sitting alone under that tree. As Sasuke approached Naruto suddenly let out a barely audible giggle. Sasuke watched as Naruto uncharacteristically brought one hand up to gently slip a bit of his shaggy bangs from his hair. What is going on with him? Sasuke thought to himself before getting close enough to cast a shadow over Naruto's sitting form. You aren't trying to beat me today. You finally give up. 
Sasuke asked in a small cocky manner, a subtle smirk playing across his lips. The raven-haired boy stood with both his hands tucked into his pockets, standing in the, the careless cool way he always stood. Naruto didn't respond to Sasuke immediately. The boy's bright blue eyes cast off to the side with a far-off smile on his face. That response or lack thereof annoyed Sasuke to no end. Well, Sasuke stated with a hint of frustration in his voice. Finally it seemed Naruto snapped out of his daze to glance up to Sasuke's annoyed expression. HM, oh that, yes you win Sasuke. Naruto stated while grinning brightly, that mask returning but not being quite right. And Sasuke noticed it. Cut the bullshit. What's gotten into you lately? Sasuke said while turning his body away from Naruto and looking down at the boy out the corner of his eyes, analyzing Naruto closely. Naruto's eyes widened at Sasuke's reaction. I must be acting strange again. Naruto thought to himself with an inward sigh. You aren't quite acting the same as you did the first day. It would be quite noticeable to anyone who paid attention. I suppose that's my fault. I've been distracting you. Midnight stated in a concerned tone inside Naruto's head. Don't say that Midnight. Always focusing on having that mask up was driving me insane. I welcome our little conversations. Plus I like listening to your voice. Naruto cooed which caused Midnight to emit a small, barely audible purr which Sasuke could hear. The hell, Sasuke stated while looking down at Naruto's scarf suspiciously. Naruto and Midnight both let out a simultaneous gasp before Naruto jumped up on his feet and placed both his hands behind his head, walking past Sasuke. Okay Sasuke if you want me to kick your butt that bad then you ask for it. Naruto stated while taking out a few kunai from the pouch on his leg and walking towards the nearest aiming tree. Sasuke smirked triumphantly and followed behind. Off to the side Aruka glanced away from the sparring session he was currently watching over to see Naruto and Sasuke getting ready to compete again. He smiled warmly. At least some things haven't changed. Aruka thought to himself. He'd also been watching Naruto closely as the boy changed and was one of the few who really noticed those changes to Naruto's behavior and the cracking of that mask. Naruto and Sasuke finally made over to two nearby aiming trees with targets painted on them. Sasuke was the first to throw, tossing a single shuriken and hitting the bullseye. I'll take it easy on you so you can keep up dope, Sasuke stated, regaining his careless demeanor as his fangirls began to gather. When he looked over Naruto was again not paying attention the boy seemingly holding back laughter. Sasuke couldn't help the annoyed look he got again. No but seriously, just like a rooster. I mean just look at it. It looks exactly like in those books Kyuubai showed me. Midnight stated with a snicker. Naruto couldn't help looking over to Sasuke and most notably, to Sasuke's hair. Naruto then gently raised his hand and cupped it in front of his mouth while stifling laughter. Midnight come on, I'm trying to concentrate. Naruto pleaded in a jovial manner. I don't see how anyone can concentrate when Rooster Head is walking around. Midnight teased again from inside Naruto's mind. As she made that joke more of Naruto's mask began to fall. He wrapped one arm around his belly in a delicate fashion, his entire posture and demeanor shifting. Naruto leaned most of his weight to one side, that gentle, far-off smile adorning his face again. He stood like his mother and even moved like her as well. Delicate, sensual, but dangerous. From off to the side Hinata crept into the small crowd of people that gathered to watch Sasuke beat Naruto once again. Mostly his fangirls. But Hinata's eyes were focused solely on Naruto. He's so different but, in a good way. Just being around him makes me feel so happy. Hinata thought to herself while seeing the way Naruto smiled. This was a different smile. It seemed genuine. Sasuke also watched from the side, a little bit at a loss for words. Was this really the dope he'd grown to know in the last two years? His fangirls mostly had an annoyed expression on their faces that Naruto hadn't thrown his dagger, but Sasuke was fascinated and curious. Finally Sakura spoke up in annoyance. Naruto quite stalling. We know you can't beat Sasuke so you might as well get it over with. The girl screeched. Without looking at her, listening to Midnight speak in his head, Naruto threw all three of the shurikens he'd previously taken from his shuriken pouch. Sasuke huffed as he watched the shuriken sail through the air before going wide-eyed. Those three shurikens hit simultaneously with a loud thunk. All three tips of those knives hitting the exact same point, dead center of that tree. But not only that, those shurikens sunk in deep in the tree from the sheer power of Naruto's throw. The sight caused a series of gasps to echo around the crowd, snapping Naruto out of his conversation with Midnight. He looked around to notice everyone staring at him silently in disbelief. Naruto glanced over to the tree to see what he had done. Oh, Naruto whispered. Sasuke, with a stunned expression, slowly walked towards the tree to get a closer look. 
Ha, see Sasuke, I'm the best. That wasn't luck at all. Nope. Naruto blurted out, rubbing his nose, Naruto trying to regain his mask. Sasuke didn't respond though, now up close to see just how each dagger was buried very, very deep in that tree. He compared it to his shuriken. His shuriken was good, the tip of it buried in the center of the tree. But all three of Naruto's shurikens were lodged to the hilt into that tree, all on the exact same spot. Sasuke then looked back at Naruto who was still trying to play it off. He did this with one throw. Sasuke thought to himself in amazement. From the side Hinata could also see very clearly what Naruto had done. She fidgeted with her hands and bit into her bottom lip, staring at Naruto with an admiring gaze. I knew it. There is so much more to Naruto. I just wish. I could be closer. With her tail wrapped around her baby fox form, Midnight closely gauged the crowd's reaction. Naruto's performance seemed to have deterred the fangirls from being suspicious, but Midnight noticed Sasuke and Hinata's behavior clear as day. You may have to talk to them alone Naruto. They aren't buying it. Midnight stated in a concerned voice. Naruto glanced quickly from Hinata to Sasuke with a small nod. Yeah I will. He spoke through his demonic link before his attention was redirected to a voice off to the side. Okay class is dismissed. I'll see you Monday morning bright and early. Enjoy your weekend. Aruka called out, signaling an end to the school day and a start of the weekend. Most of the kids were happy to rush off but Sasuke stayed for a bit longer to stare at the tree. Hinata hesitated before turning to leave the park with everyone else, not wanting to draw too much attention to the fact that she had been nearly obsessively focused on Naruto. But as she walked Naruto passed her quickly, brushing slightly against her arm. Hinata could feel Naruto place something within her pocket, the sensation causing the girl to blush harshly without looking at him. Naruto then whisked quietly so only she could hear. Read it when nobody is around to see. Naruto spoke out quietly before stopping suddenly and throwing his hands up in the air dramatically. Oh yay, almost forgot. Naruto blurted out in his dobi voice while moving to the tree that Sasuke was still silently staring at. Almost forgot these, Naruto said grabbing his three shuriken. Naruto then began to pat Sasuke on the shoulder. Better luck next time Sasuke. You should think next time you mess with a master shinobi. Naruto said in a over-the-top taunting voice. Sasuke glanced out the corner of his eyes towards Naruto, a mixed expression on his face, as if seeing Naruto for the first time. What has he been hiding? Is this really Naruto? Sasuke thought to himself with a tentative gaze. Naruto kept the bright grin up before turning around and walking off with his hands behind his head. As Naruto departed, Sasuke felt something fall down the collar of his shirt. He quickly reached to grab it and noticed it to be a small piece of paper. Narrowing his eyes Sasuke glanced around at who may be watching before hopping up into the nearest tree to take off towards his house. If Naruto bothered to leave a hidden note then it was pretty clear to Sasuke that he should read it in secret. What could this be about? Sasuke asked himself, jumping now from tree to tree as he opened up that piece of paper. His eyes then narrowed when he read it. After receiving that piece of paper Hinata kept walking taking the road she usually take to walk back home from school. But instead of following the normal path she made a small detour, moving behind a nearby building and making sure she was alone. Hinata then bit into her bottom lip in anticipation before taking the note out of her pocket, opening it up and reading it quietly. Upon reading the note the girl's face flushed that familiar bright red color. Hinata then held the note against her heart with both hands before tucking it into her pocket and returning to her normal path towards her home. But now she had a small smile painted across her lips. Back at the school Aruka was cleaning up the field that the kids were using for practice. He went to all the areas, gathering the equipment before heading over to the tree he saw Sasuke and Naruto practicing on. He'd caught a glimpse of their little competition but couldn't see close up until now. Aruka paid attention close enough to remember that Sasuke used a separate tree. Aruka moved over to Sasuke's tree to see one gash in the dead center. To be expected. But when he moved to Naruto's tree Uruka's eyes went wide. He stared at the tree frozen for a moment before dropping his equipment. Naruto did this with just a kunai. That deep. No, no one could dot 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 not at this level at least. Not unless. An audible gasp was heard from Uruka before he suddenly disappeared in a whirl of leaves. Twigs snapped as a lone figure walked silently through the dense foliage of a lively forest. The sound of crickets could be heard all throughout the night air. The figure stepped carefully through the trees and other various plant life until reaching the edge of that forest, the figure's form being illuminated by the bright moonlight. 
She looked up to the moon with her wide pupiled lavender eyes before moving her attention to a small stream in front of her. The figure was none other than Hinata Hyuga, out late despite her curfew. A while earlier, Hinata sat in her room, the walls painted plain white. The environment was rather bland. She had a bed covered in silky sheets which was made perfectly. The girl sat at her desk, nose buried deep in a book. The girl's head suddenly perked up when hearing a knock at her door. Come in. The girl called out in a tiny voice. As she said this the door opened to reveal a tall man with a emotionless expression across his face. He looked down at Hinata with wide, lavender pupils similar to her own. Have you finished your studies Hinata? The man asked in a gruff, no-nonsense sort of way. Hinata averted her gaze from him, always finding it hard to look him in the eyes. Yes father, she stated respectfully in a quiet voice. The man nodded in acknowledgement. Then get some sleep. Tomorrow you and Hinabi will have another sparring session. The man ordered while closing the door to Hinata's room. Hinata stayed silent, just nodding her head in acknowledgement. She hated sparring with her sister. Hinata always held back and so always lost. Her father was distant because Hinata had proven herself to be the weaker sibling. A fact she resented and depressed her. But Hinata was an obedient daughter. She wanted to prove herself, which is why she worked so hard in school. She just didn't want to do it by beating her sister. Because then her sister would be the one outcast. Hinata put out the light to her room and got ready for bed. But this night was a bit different. The girl settled down on top of the cushions of her bed. But only so the sounds of her movements could be heard. After a few moments of laying in the dark Hinata carefully got up, slowly and carefully moving as quietly as possible over to her closet where she'd grab her jacket and shoes. She still had on her pajamas, but now she also had a jacket as well. Still attempting to be as silent as possible, Hinata moved over to her window, hesitating while preparing to jump out. She then reached into the pocket of her jacket to pull out that note to read it again. A tender smile crossed her face before she gained renewed purpose and jumped out of the window on her way out of the Hyuga compound. As she left a man stepped out of the shadows from the side of the house. He just watched her quietly without saying anything. Hayashi, Hinata's father, watched his daughter sneak out for the first time ever. He didn't stop her though, returning back to the house. He'd see where this lead. Back to current time. Hinata now walked on the edge of the stream of rushing water, the girl staring down at the note Naruto had left her. I know you've noticed something different about me lately Hinata. I have secrets, and I want to talk to you. When you can, follow the north stream when you are sure no one is following. Then we can talk and you'll be able to see the real me. The note read. Hinata had read the note multiple times, fixating on the line the real me. She just had to know what that meant. As she continued on her ears suddenly picked up the sound of something or someone moving a bit ahead of her. Still walking next to that stream, Hinata lifted her head to notice another person walking along the edge of that stream as well, on the other side of it a little bit ahead of her. She recognized him, and soon the figure turned to see her. Sasuke, Hinata asked in surprise. The boy was indeed Sasuke, turning to face her with a confused look in his eyes. He had on his regular clothes, as opposed to Hinata who was still in her jacket and pajamas. Sasuke didn't respond immediately. Instead he jumped over the stream and landed next to the girl, making Hinata jump a bit. Hey, you're that Hyuga girl right? Sasuke asked in a careless fashion looking at her suspiciously. Hinata bowed her head slightly and nodded. Yes, Hinata. She responded timidly. Sasuke shrugged and turned his back to her. They. He stated shortly before walking forward to follow the stream. So what are you doing out here by yourself? And in your pajamas no less. Sasuke interrogated the girl. Hinata slowly began to follow slowly behind Sasuke, tucking that note into the pocket of her jacket. Oh, nothing really. I just dot 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 like being out here. The girl stuttered nervously. Sasuke turned his head to glance to the girl out the corner of his eye. You're a bad liar. Did you know that? Sasuke stated in a blunt manner. Hinata just bowed her head as a saddened expression appeared across her face. Sasuke, still watching her, turned around and stopped in his tracks. This caused Hinata to bump her head against his chest since her head was bowed. The small collision threw her off balance, making her fall back. But like before, Sasuke reached an arm forward around her waist to catch her before she fell. He held her long enough for her to regain her balance before tucking his hand back into the pocket of his shorts. Inada now had a bright red blush across her face. Sasuke cocked his head to the side in mild interest before reaching into his pocket and taking out a note similar to Hinata's. You're a bit of an airhead. Sasuke stated matter-of-factly while handing Hinata the note. If possible her face burned an even brighter shade of red. Could this get any more embarrassing? But the note Sasuke presented her grabbed her attention. 
She looked down at it before glancing up to Sasuke's face. It can't be a coincidence that you are out here. I'm guessing Naruto gave you something similar to this. Sasuke spoke out, looking towards Hinata expectantly. Hinata hesitated for a moment before nodding and pulling out a similar note from her pocket. Sasuke nodded in satisfaction when seeing that, turning around to continue walking down the stream. Thought so, so you noticed it to ha, huh? the way Naruto has been acting lately. Sasuke went on. Hinata sped up to walk by his side while nodding her head. Why yes, she spoke up shortly. Sasuke kept looking forward as he walked. How long ago did you start noticing it? He questioned further. Hinata's eyes trailed off into space as she thought. A few weeks ago I think, around the time he started wearing that black scarf, she explained. Sasuke nodded in agreement. Yeah that's when I noticed too. He said in the note that he has secrets. What do you think they are? Sasuke asked while finally returning his eyes to the short girl. He nod a bit into her bottom lip as her brow furrowed in thought. Aye. But before she could finish her sentence Hinata let out an audible gasp, her eyes staring straight forward. Sasuke moved his gaze to follow hers, his eyes growing wide at the sight before him. The more the two children moved, the wider the stream got until the gap between sides was too wide to jump. But what they saw was the figure of Naruto dancing atop the water of the wide stream. Not only was Naruto standing on a flowing stream of water, but he was completely different to their eyes. Naruto wasn't just dancing, his body shifted into different graceful fighting stances as he did so. He tiptoed atop the water, completely barefoot. Adoring his body was a baggy white kimono. It wasn't quite a female or male kimono, looking to be a mix of both. The fabric of it fluttered gently in the breeze as he spun around and danced about, taking different position that required an uncanny amount of balance. There was a large white obai tied around his waist, tied in a bow that made Naruto appear to be gift-wrapped. The fabric of the thing also fluttered in the wind. And of course that familiar black scarf was wrapped around his neck, the color contrasting against the rest of his outfit. Naruto's hair was also different. Sasuke and Hinata noticed almost immediately that it was much, much longer. His spiky hair flowed down to nearly to his knees. The way his long hair moved made Naruto appear to be shrouded in a golden veil, illuminated by the bright moonlight. Naruto was notably still in human form. His eyes were still blue, no tails or fox ears in sight. Sasuke and Hinata watched on in amazement as Naruto finished up his dance, form practice. Naruto finished with one leg raised high in the air, the bottom half of that kimono fluttering down a bit to reveal the white pants he wore underneath. He balanced himself perfectly on the ball of his foot, his arms outstretched on either side of him. Naruto's back was currently facing Sasuke and Hinata. Slowly Naruto lowered his leg and turned around. Hinata released another audible gasp from what she saw. Naruto's face has changed. It was still familiar but she finally saw Naruto's true face. His features were softer, rounder, less boyish. The three whiskers on each side of his face were slightly more prominent. His eyelashes were longer, thicker, lips more lush. His eyes were different, more intense, more seductive. Soon Naruto began to silently walk towards the two and Hinata had to bow her head as a huge blush appeared across her face. Naruto was walking the way he always walked, well in his demon form when he wasn't pretending to be the dope. Something completely new to both Hinata and Sasuke. She couldn't help noting the way his hips moved hypnotically from side to side. Even his head had a subtle, gentle sway to it. His body was more relaxed as he walked, his hands tucked into the oversized sleeves of his kimono. Naruto stopped directly in front of the two, still standing on the rushing water of the stream. He tilted his head slightly to the side and sent them a gentle smile. Hey, Naruto stated in his true voice. It was softer, more calm, but still Naruto. Sasuke had been staring in disbelief as he watched this dot 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 new person. Hey, Sasuke responded in a dumbfounded manner. Hinata was also staring unblinkingly at Naruto. Her face was flushed red but somehow she couldn't turn her head away. And Naruto. Hinata stuttered in a shocked tone. Naruto's smile widened at her response. The boy stepping forward and moved a hand up to wipe a bit of Hinata's bangs from her face. The one and only. Naruto responded softly. The contact combined with the sound of Naruto's voice caused a visible shudder in the girl's body. From behind her fox tail, Midnight watched in her baby fox form. The poor girl, she probably doesn't even know what to do with herself. Midnight commented in amusement. Naruto let out an audible chuckle before looking over to Sasuke. I'm glad you both came, Naruto said while walking past them both and over to his familiar grassy clearing. Sasuke just nodded and turned to follow, his face still uncharacteristically dumbfounded. Hinata stayed frozen for a while before finally blinking back to reality. 
She looked around for a bit, spotting Naruto and Sasuke walking off. Hinata then sucked in a breath and scampered over to Sasuke's side in front of Naruto. Naruto stopped in the middle of the clearing, turning around to face the two. I'm guessing you have a lot of questions, Naruto stated, knowing the answer to be quite obvious judging by their behavior. Hinata and Sasuke both just silently nodded their heads. Naruto shifted his gaze from Sasuke to Hinata with an amused smirk. They were so adorable. Naruto then began to sit down, kneeling on the grass and placing his hands atop his lap. Naruto's long sleeves covered his hands. Sasuke and Hinata quietly followed, sitting down in front of him. Hinata kneeled down in the same way and Sasuke sat on his butt, one knee close to his body, resting an arm on that knee while using his other arm to support his body weight. I can't tell you everything. Honestly, I don't know whether or not I can trust you. The person you know in school, that Naruto. It's just an act to hide who I truly am. Naruto began to explain. Sasuke's brow furrowed in confusion. But why? Sasuke questioned. Naruto didn't answer immediately, taking a bit of time to look up to the light of the moon. Hinata took the opportunity to go back to staring at Naruto's face. He was so beautiful. Because if people found out that I'm not that idiot they think I am, it would cause trouble for me. I can't explain the details, but I am who I am at school for my own protection. Naruto explained. Both Hinata and Sasuke looked more confused than before. But finally Hinata spoke up. So are you in hiding? Or being hunted? Is someone trying to hurt you? Hinata blurted out in a concerned voice. Naruto shifted his soft gaze towards her, causing Hinata to tear her eyes away and bow her head. Naruto let out another soft chuckle. In a way yes, but it's more complicated than you both know. I can only tell you everything when I know I can trust you. For my own protection. Do you understand? Naruto said while leaning forward to place a hand gently atop Sasuke's. The contact caused Sasuke to squirm a bit. Sasuke pulled his hand away and turned his face away with a soft blush spreading across his pale cheeks. Naruto raised a brow at that reaction, and so did Midnight. Human boys, Midnight stated with a scoff. Naruto just inwardly chuckled. He probably isn't used to such things. Naruto spoke to Midnight through their link. Midnight nodded in agreement. From what I've heard from Kaiu-chan most humans aren't. They have a thing about being touched by their own kind. I'll never understand it. Midnight stated. Hinata and Sasuke watched as Naruto gained that far-off look of his. The boy going silent for a while. So, Sasuke finally spoke up, snapping Naruto out of his conversation with Midnight. Naruto looked to them both before smiling again and nodding. Oh, I almost forgot, Naruto said while suddenly rising up from his standing position. Sasuke and Hinata soon followed. Sasuke, I know the reason you're here. You want power, and you saw an opportunity to gain it from me. Am I right? Naruto asked in a casual manner. Sasuke hesitated for a moment before nodding his head. Naruto nodded in understanding. Like everyone else Naruto had heard about Sasuke's brother killing all of the Uchiha clan except Sasuke. I can make you stronger Sasuke but I want something in return, Naruto stated, which caused Sasuke to narrow his eyes towards Naruto. How do I even know that you are strong? Just because you threw a few shuriken well, Sasuke asked in a skeptical manner. Naruto tilted his head to the side while watching Sasuke closely. I suppose I should give a demonstration, Naruto stated in a matter-of-fact sort of way while taking a few steps back. Hinata bit into her bottom lip nervously. Without looking away from Sasuke, Naruto called out to Hinata. Can you give us a bit of space Hinata-chan? Naruto asked in a sweet voice. Hinata moved instantly to comply. As she moved away her fear dissipated to be replaced by a fluttering in her heart. He called me Hinata-chan. She thought to herself with a dreamy expression. Sasuke kept his gaze narrowed as Naruto stepped away. Naruto stopped in his tracks a few feet away while standing with his feet together and his arms tucked into his sleeves. Try to hit me Sasuke. All you have to do is touch me once. Naruto stated in a calm voice. Sasuke narrowed his eyes before dropping low into a fighting stance. Without wasting any time he charged, taking shurikens out of his leg pouch and tossing them towards Naruto. Naruto weaved to the side slightly, dodging those projectiles with ease. Almost as soon as those shurikens passed by Naruto, Sasuke jumped into the air above Naruto's head to deliver an axe kick down on top of Naruto. Still with his arms in his sleeves Naruto took a single step to the side to effectively dodge the attack. As soon as Sasuke's foot hit the ground he twisted his body into a punch which again Naruto weaved past, dropping under Sasuke. Hinata watched the scene with amazement as Naruto danced around Sasuke's assault seemingly effortlessly. She could tell that Naruto was much faster than Sasuke. After a while of hitting air Sasuke growled in frustration before performing a series of backflips, retreating from Naruto. 
He then threw another barrage of shurikens towards Naruto, who again easily dodged it. But those shurikens were followed by a huge plume of fire which seemingly engulfed Naruto's body. Hinata went wide-eyed at the sight and jumped up from her seated position. Naruto-kun. She shouted out in a panic. Sasuke stopped his flame, having formed his hands into seals and blown fire from his mouth. But as soon as those flames stopped Sasuke felt something tickling the back of his neck. Slowly arms began to wrap around Sasuke's neck. Sasuke turned his head to the side to notice Naruto right behind him, untouched. And now Naruto was engulfing Sasuke in a hug. Naruto laid his head along Sasuke's shoulder while softly glancing at the boy. Almost Sasuke, Naruto stated in a playfully teasing manner. Sasuke tried to move but found his body wouldn't respond. His muscles were frozen. He could only watch as a aura of unfamiliar energy began to gather around them. Sasuke's eyes darted about as a thin layer of red chakra began to engulf both of their bodies. The sheer power of it made Sasuke shake. From the side Hinata watched with a horrified look on her face. The power of that chakra which was emanating from Naruto made her legs weak. She eventually fell down onto her knees and stared in awe. Let me show you a bit of who I really am. Naruto whispered gently into Sasuke's ear before flaring his chakra. As he did so the entire area was engulfed in a wave of thrashing red chakra which lashed out violently. There was panic clearly in Sasuke's eyes. The earth was literally shaking under his feet. He couldn't help a single tear welling up in his eye and pouring down his cheek. Upon seeing that Naruto gasped before pulling away from Sasuke and letting that red chakra recede back into Naruto's body, Naruto could feel Sasuke's fear. Naruto instantly dropped down to his knees and bent over, bowing towards Sasuke as Sasuke's body was released from its paralyzed state. Immediately Sasuke fell over on all fours, looking to Naruto out the corner of his eyes. He had a horrified expression which quickly dissipated when noticing Naruto's behavior. I'm so sorry Sasuke. I shouldn't have done it that way. I just wanted to show you. I'm sorry. Naruto whispered in a tender, vulnerable voice while wrapping his arms around his own body. Sasuke didn't know what to say or think, watching someone with such power bowing before him. Hinata watched the scene dumbfounded as well. But she gasped when seeing a bit of tears forming at the corner of Naruto's eyes. Immediately she jumped up and ran towards Naruto leaping at him and engulfing him in a hug. Naruto went wide-eyed, catching her at the last second and falling over on his back with Hinata on top of him. It's okay Naruto, we understand. Thank you for sharing this with us. Hinata whispered in a desperate tone, trying to soothe Naruto's sadness. Her head was buried in his chest, arms wrapped around his body. Naruto held a look of genuine surprise on his face before nodding and sitting up, keeping his arms wrapped around Hinata's waist to hold her close. One of his hands trailed up to entangle in the hair on the back of her head. By now Hinata's face was bright as a tomato, but she didn't pull away from his grasp. Sasuke watched the entire scene with mixed feelings, sitting down now and leaning back on his hands. What are you? Sasuke questioned in apprehension. Naruto looked over to Sasuke with a tender smile, still cuddling Hinata's form to his body. You'll just have to find that out. Naruto stated in a sultry manner, back to his normal self. Sasuke thought about those words for a second before nodding his head. That price you mentioned. What was it? Sasuke asked now. Naruto raised a brow at that response before chuckling. So now you're interested. Naruto questioned, which drew a small nod from Sasuke. It's quite simple really. Your friendship. Naruto stated before looking down to Hinata who was staring up at him. Is that fair? Naruto asked the both of them. Hinata just silently nodded her head. Sasuke held a confused look on his face but still nodded his head. They, behind the furry black tail wrapped around Naruto's neck midnight watched the entire scene closely. Her eyes were focused on Hinata, who was still curled against Naruto. She stared on in a thoughtful manner before finally receding into Naruto's mind. Or more specifically, Kyuubai's cage. Kyuubai's cage was no longer just a cage. Instead of the dank sewer, Kyuubai's cage now looked like a large, sunny, grassy plain. There were no bars in sight. Midnight in her demon form walked through the grass, no end to that grass in sight. She eventually came upon where Kyuubai was settled. Kyuubai was in her humanoid form, the same as Midnight. Kyuubai wore her normal red dress, lying on her back in a lazy fashion, staring up at the sun. She'd also been watching the entire scene play out. Midnight walked over and laid at Kyuubai's side, reaching over to hold the woman's hand. Kyuubai entwined her fingers with Midnight's and turned her head over to look at the black furred fox. Something on your mind, darling? Kyuubai questioned, already knowing the answer. Midnight turned over and pressed her body into Kyuubai's, snuggling against the older woman. Do you even have to ask? Midnight questioned with a huff. 
That response caused Kyuubai to release the soft chuckle. She moved her other hand to wrap around Midnight's midsection to pull the girl even closer. The side of Midnight's face was now laying on Kyuubai's covered breasts. I told you you'd have competition. Plus, you should be happy. Kyuubai stated in a nonchalant manner. Midnight frowned and looked up to Kyuubai's face. How am I supposed to be happy about this? Midnight stated with a pout on her lips. Kyuubai just rolled her eyes. First of all Naruto is still a child. He hasn't chosen yet. But even if he does choose someone else, if the person he chooses makes him happy then what is there to pout about? Kyuubai questioned while entwining her legs with Midnight's. Midnight suddenly went wide-eyed in realization before frowning. Oh gods, now I feel stupid. I think hanging around these humans is really getting to me. Midnight stated with a huff which caused Kyuubai to release a little chuckle. Kyuubai then rolled over suddenly so that she was on top of Midnight. Midnight now on her back. They can rub off on you so you have to be vigilante, especially since we can feel their emotions. But you can't let them corrupt you. What you are feeling, it's called jealousy. The humans have an entire word for it because they can't feel each other's emotions. So their jealousy blinds them and makes them unable to see the big picture. Jealousy is a big part of how they destroy each other. Huyubai explained while leaning up to nibble lightly at the tip of Midnight's ear. Midnight closed her eyes to enjoy the treatment, squirming beneath the touch. Thank you Kaiyu-chan. I'm still trying to adjust to this world. Every day I experience the feelings of these humans. So much of it is so dark. I don't know how you managed to stay sane being here all alone for as long as you were. Midnight said while wrapping her legs around Kyuubai's waist and clinging even closer to the woman. Kyuubai nodded her head before tearing her mouth away from Midnight's ear to look into the girl's face with her intense feral, red slitted eyes. You just have to remember who you are. We are demons. Because of who they are, they can never know what we have. You have to hold on to the connections you have, that you remember. You have to remember what it is like to be among your people. Peace, love, happiness, kindness. The humans they only know these things on a superficial level. Because of their jealousy, their greed, their hate. You have to remember that we are who we are, our society is the way it is, because we don't have those things. And when you realize that, it's far easier to shun those feelings. To enjoy what you have, to focus on what really matters. Kyuubai explained, and as she spoke her lips drew closer to Midnight's. And Midnight could do nothing but stare adoringly up to her idol. How can we protect Naruto when he lives in this type of world? Midnight asked in a dreamy fashion. Kyuubai just smirked when hearing that question. By destroying them. Kyuubai answered cryptically before pressing her lips to Midnight's. Instantly Midnight arched her back and wrapped her arms around Kyuubai's neck, a pleased purr emanating from her body. Kyuubai growled out animalistically when hearing and seeing Midnight's reaction. It had been so long since she enjoyed this little ritual with someone of her own kind. And damn it if it didn't feel good. Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata stayed up late into the night discussing and conversing about their new discovering of Naruto's personality and power. Sasuke and Hinata were still all getting used to listening to the true Naruto for the first time. He was a lot more intelligent, calm, and sensual than the dobe that they knew. For Sasuke it made him a bit uneasy. It was like speaking to a brand new person. He had many mixed feelings. Though Sasuke focused on just how powerful Naruto was and how exactly he came to be that way. Hinata was absolutely enthralled by everything Naruto said. They all sat in a circle while talked and Hinata couldn't take her eyes away from the golden-haired boy. It was obvious to everyone, and she held a sad look in her eyes when she had to leave, making sure she'd be in bed before anyone would check on her. Sasuke decided to leave at the same time after Naruto promised to train him in the days to come. Thank you again for opening up to us Naruto-kun. Hinata said with her head bowed, now standing in front of Naruto as she readied to leave the clearing. Naruto smiled warmly down to her, stepping forward and opening his arms up before engulfing the short girl in a warm hug. Hinata's heart fluttered from the contact, that familiar blush painting her face. Thank you for being so supportive Hinata-chan, Naruto said before placing a tender kiss against her forehead. She gasped audibly before nodding staying still, not moving until Naruto released his hold. From behind Sasuke just nodded his head and flicked his wrist a bit as he departed. Hey it's cool, see you tomorrow, Sasuke said, trying to regain his cool demeanor. Finally releasing Hinata, Naruto stepped back before turning around and heading back to his spot in the middle of the clearing. Hinata's gaze lingered on the way he moved so hypnotically before finally shaking her head to snap out of her daze, biting into her bottom lip. The girl hesitated before turning around and running off, a tender smile plastered across her face. When the clearing was clear Naruto raised his arms wide above his head and let out a yawn. 
As he did that, the black scarf around his neck started to move. Midnight unraved her baby fox tail from around Naruto and hopped off of his shoulder, morphing into her full demonic form as she hit the ground. She then turned around to face Naruto, looking at him with a small smirk. Well that was eventful. Midnight cooed in an amused tone. Naruto chuckled softly before stepping towards Midnight and moving his arms forward to wrap around her waist, tugging her into a possessive hug. Instantly Midnight wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck, twirling one finger along the hair on the back of his head. You could say that. I'm pretty sure Hinata has a huge crush on me. Naruto stated matter-of-factly while falling backwards and bringing Midnight with him. She gave no protest as she fell with Naruto, the boy landing gently on his back with his tail slipping out from under his robes to cushion his fall. And as his back hit the ground his fox ears sprouted on top of his head, his nails extended, his canine teeth sharpened, and his eyes took on its red, slitted, demonic form. Naruto now laid on his back with Midnight lying atop him, Naruto never releasing that strong grip he had on her slender waist. You think? Midnight commented with a knowing giggle while leaning up to nuzzle her face underneath Naruto's chin. Naruto watched her idly with a small smile for a time before looking up at the stars in the night sky. Sasuke was freaking out for a moment but I think it all went well, all things considered. Naruto mused. Midnight was busy entangling her legs with Naruto's. How long before you think you can trust telling them about the true you? Midnight questioned while bringing a furred hand down to lightly draw circles against Naruto's chest. Naruto cast his gaze off to the side in thought. I don't know. Naruto stated in apprehension. Midnight's eyes watched his expression before she focused on the circle she was drawing in his chest with her sharp nail. Well let's hope they are ready when you do. Especially Hinata. I think she'd actually accept you no matter what. She seems like that type of person. She reminds me of a few demons I've known. I like her. Midnight commented in an idle manner. Naruto raised a brow while looking down at Midnight. You mean you dot 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 like her, like her? Naruto questioned in interest. Midnight let out a sultry giggle at that question. Maybe. You better watch out Naru-kun. I might just steal her away before you get your claws in her. Midnight warned while leaning her body up so she could begin placing small licks into the side of Naruto's neck. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed in comfort. These tongue massages were the best. Common among demons. His mother did it to him, and now Midnight. That's okay but I better get an invite to the wedding. Naruto stated with a playful chuckle. Midnight placed a single fingers against her bottom lip in thought. Maybe dot 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 we'll see. But what do you really think of her? Midnight asked in a curious fashion. Naruto looked down at Midnight in thought. Well she's definitely nice. I just don't know yet. She's a Hyuga. That complicated things. Especially so when mother and I start to move forward with our plans. If she gets close I may hurt her. Naruto stated in a serious manner. Midnight nodded in understanding. That is true. She'd have to choose. You'd have to have a very strong friendship for her to choose you when the time comes. Midnight went on. Naruto nodded in agreement, his eyes taking a far-off gaze. Midnight frowned as she felt his worry. You'll figure it out Naru-kun. You have your mother to help you along the way. And me. Midnight whispered tenderly. Upon hearing those words Naruto looked down at Midnight's face again, his grip tightening around her waist. Thank you. You're. I'm glad you were the one that came through the threshold. Naruto spoke sweetly while averting his gaze, a small blush tinting his cheeks. Midnight couldn't help the genuine smile that played across her lips as she nuzzled her face even more into the side of Naruto's neck. Me too. She whispered dreamily before finally allowing her eyes to flutter shut, her face showing her satisfaction. Naruto stared down at Midnight's restful face for a bit after she closed her eyes, a foreign feeling welling up in him. He didn't quite understand it but eventually the tween wandered off to sleep as well. For the next few weeks Sasuke, Hinata, and Naruto began to meet up after school nearly every day to spend time together, and also to train. Naruto did as he promised to Sasuke, training the raven-haired preteen as his first student. It was an unexpected change for Sasuke to be taught by whom he once considered his peer, but it was obvious that Naruto's strength and knowledge vastly outweighed his own. Hinata trained as well but Naruto could tell that Sasuke trained for harder than her. It was clear that Hinata was there mostly just to spend more time with Naruto, which Naruto was perfectly fine with. In terms of her father Naruto instructed her not to lie, so she always told him when she went out that she was going to train with friends. He allowed it for now, especially since could sense that she was telling the truth. 
though Hayashi was suspicious of who these friends were. Hinata never specified and he was too busy with Hyuga relations and training Hinata's sister to press the matter. So Hinata was relatively free to spend her days as she pleased along as she didn't slack on her studies. While the three were together it wasn't all training however. Naruto insisted that they eat together as well and take multiple breaks. He was really interested in getting to know the two more and they felt the same way. They'd often have small conversations over afternoon snacks. While Naruto spent time with Hinata and Sasuke during the day, Midnight trained with Kyuubai. Midnight figured that she had really been slacking since coming to the demon realm. Kyuubai was quick to take the girl under her wing, making sure that Midnight would be strong if she were to stay with Naruto, either as his peer or even potential lover. During the late nights Midnight and Naruto spent time with each other, usually curled up and conversing about their day and other various topics. Naruto had began to learn enough about Sasuke and Hinata that he was almost ready to take their training and relationship to the next level. I will continue the story in next part till then we weave offline.